And I have a cat eating a box, so I will be right. Do you have any pets, Janice? No, no more. We did have a cat, but he died last year or so. <laughs> oh, sorry. Yeah. Do you? Yes, I have one cat and one dog. And they're oh. both like very, within arm's reach right now. They just oh, really? Don't... They get oh, along? Yeah. They coexist. Okay. <laughs> oh, speaking of dogs, Connie. Oh, no, he's one. Shiloh. Can you say hi? <laughs> hi. How are you guys? He looks upset with you. <laughs> he's very arrogant. He ignores people. When when people want to pet him, he looks away. It's ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> he likes going everywhere. No, he's happy. He's in a happy, <laughs> arrogant place. <laughs> So I am going to, because my video where I am waiting on um, Maya, I got here early because she's got an hour of practice, but um, the video, I mean, the um, reception goes in and out. If I get off video, it's better, but I just wanted to say hello. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for letting Were y'all expecting anyone to be absent? Um, that's a great, well, there are a few folks who um, we just haven't seen in a few months. And I think every subcommittee has those few people. So, um, but in terms of the folks who've been engaging, um, uh, no, I think we we're expecting- Oh, here we go, yeah. To attend. Hey everyone, this is Sharuk. Hello. Hi. How's everyone doing? Doing well. Doing well. We're just talking about pets. Hey Sharuk. Hey Monique. Connie. It's Connie. <clears throat> okay, let me pull up the roll to make sure we have quorum. And I can go ahead and get y'all up on Facebook Live. I have your agenda ready. Let me know if you want me to share it. I'm not sure. Like, I know each subcommittee has their own little groove and I haven't been working with this one. So if y'all need anything from me, just let me know. Okay. Yeah, I think we can go ahead and get started on live. Uh, but right. we don't need to share the agenda. Okay. That's good. So there's four of us here. So I think that is quorum. Yeah, because it's four of eight or seven or something like that now. So we'll just go ahead. Uh, thanks everyone for joining today. Why don't we just go ahead and get started with the quick roll call. Uh, so I'll just move down the list. So Commissioner Arif, I'm here. Monique. Monique's on mute, but she's here. I see her. Uh, Connie, you're here. here. Thank you. Janice. I'm here. Lauren. Kathy. And Kirk. Okay, cool. So just taking a look at the agenda, first we wanted to talk about the survey results. So did people have time? I know it was sent not too long ago, but did people have time to digest the sur survey results, at least the multiple choice questions and have any thoughts around it?
Are you going to give like a, a recap or? Yeah, yeah, I can. I can give yeah. a recap. Or so, a summary or, you know. We had sent out kind of like the rolled up view, Janice, on Basecamp that had the multiple choice questions. I uh, saw kind of that. It looked like just a bunch of people where they had answered. Is that what you mean? Mm -hmm. Well, there was two forms, so I can I can kind of share my screen. So one was, uh, oh, I can actually can't share my screen. You should be able to now. Okay, thank you. Yep. Can everybody see it? Mm -hmm. So one was this one that yeah. didn't have the free response. Uh, answers in it, but it kind of rolled everything up across all the survey results for the multiple choice questions. So this was this was a good place to get some initial understanding of who was responding and, and generally how they were responding. So, so would it be helpful if we walk through this together? Yes, I saw that front first page, but um, I see it says one of seven. I, Right, I didn't see the other pages. Okay. Okay. Well, why don't we go ahead and walk through it? Is that big enough for everybody oh, to see? That's good. Yeah. Okay, great. So uh, the first question here was around race and ethnicity. A vast majority of the people here said white, and then next was Asian, and then uh, very close to Asian was the Black or African American population, but as you can see, close to 70% of the respondents identified as white. On so you got 32 responses, is that correct? That is correct. Well, I was hoping for more, but anyway, we get what we get, right? Yeah. Okay. No, I mean, I think it was pretty good. How, how many people did we send it out to? It was something like 50, I think right? it was seven. I thought it was 70. 70, Everyone. yes. So 50% 50, 50 is, is a pretty good response rate. I would, I would be pretty happy with that. Okay. So then uh, moving on to Hispanic or Latino, about 25 of the respondents identified as Hispanic or Latino. This was a free text question, so we'll go ahead and skip that. It was actually 34 respondents. Two people skipped the first question, Janice. Okay. Uh, so this was pretty interesting. So it was, uh, to what extent does BPD develop relations with community members, uh, residents, organizations, and groups? And I thought it was pretty interesting that a vast majority of the people were either somewhat or to a great extent, right? About half or somewhat. Hey, can we, can we qualify just to make sure that I'm tracking, and Janice may appreciate this, we sent it out to 70 groups, like group head leads, right? And yes, at least. In, essence, in essence, they had broader communities under them that we were hopeful to get responses from. Correct. The reality, the reality sounds like, it, which isn't bad, that the group heads that we sent it out to, almost 50% of them, or 43%, whatever that is, actually responded. It doesn't sound like it went to the broader community. Do you guys agree with that? Just so we qualify where we're starting? I don't know that we can say that, um, Connie. I, I mean, because I get numbers wise, it would apply that, it would appear that way, but what if, you know, one group sent it out to a bunch of people and that's where all these answers come from where the other groups didn't respond at all. Got it. Um, so we did we did ask the question what organization do you represent so like if you look through the detailed survey results you'll see that yeah it's like four of these respondents are from the mosque or five of these respondents are from the mosque right so you could start to see um kind of where it was just the heads first first people sending it out throughout their community as well i think i think i don't remember all of them to be honest because it, it was kind of a quick look earlier but I think the mosque probably had the most individual number of participants. Yeah, and I'm not saying that's good or bad. I'm just trying to qualify how deep we um, we may or may not have gone. I hear you, Monique. Okay, sounds good. I, that was helpful. 
Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, moving on down, do you believe BPD is respectful and they engage with you and your community? Fast majority of people said yes. In your opinion, does Brookhaven PD make it easy for community members to provide inputs? Vast majority of people said yes. Out of the seven that said no, I think like three or four of them were from the mosque. Uh, and most of the free responses in that were, uh, this is the first time we've had outreach, right? And so they said, you know, maybe it's different, but this is the first time we felt that someone's reached out to us about these sorts of things. I don't, I don't remember what the exact number was there, but it's something interesting to note. Mm -hmm. Are you aware of the events that BPD hosts? Again, about three fourths of the respondents said yes <clears throat> to that. And then it was about 50-50 split on had they attended an event or not. And Sharuk, I think that that one and the, the other point, um, the earlier one about the whole somewhat or the vast majority of the people saying somewhat um, uh, engaging, BPD engages or to a great extent. I think we, we also have to kind of qualify that by this list came from organizations that had uh, not necessarily a relationship, but they were already identified contacts to BPD. So they would have um, been either, I'm sure BPD uses that same list to promote whatever they got going on as well. Um, so so I, I don't know that that's gonna kind of have captured the broader population just for context. Yeah, I mean, that's that's kind of the frame of the whole survey, right? Uh, that, that at some level was that, level of bias is expected in the responses given the people it was sent to at the end of the day, I think. Yeah. So on the next one, uh, how might, this was actually a free response. I don't, I don't know why these numbers are the way they are. So I was hoping someone could explain to me. Yeah, I'm not sure that we can actually use the data from this question, unfortunately, because it seems that in the creation of the question, the scale was zero to a hundred. So I, you know, I would guess that if someone marked 80, they really meant four, but. Yeah, that, you can't. That's what because, I was thinking. Yeah, you can't because my, my husband who filled out the survey and myself, I, I don't know, I guess it didn't dawn on me. I don't know what I put, but. My, my husband in filling out the survey actually limited himself to one through five. He knew that it saw that it went up to a hundred, but he limited himself to one through five. So he could have given you a, a three or four, um, which wouldn't translate uh, as well, I imagine. So I don't know how other people looked at that, but that was an error in the, the survey creation. Well, that's unfortunate. Um... It was an important question. Okay. So this was free response. So we'll just, we'll, we'll ignore this, but <clears throat> there might be stuff in the free responses that's interesting there. So this was the use of force question. And if they ut utilize appropriate use of force in their contact with BPD and vast majority of people said, I've not had contact. Um, and actually nobody res responded with no. There was a couple unsures, a couple yeses, and then a lot of have not had anything with BPD that resulted in the use of force. I think this was free response too. And then this one, BPD follows the same protocol. There was yes and no's out of the seven. Again, a few of these were, were from the mosque. Uh, and a lot of the responses there were driven by, you know, we don't, we don't really know because we haven't had a lot of engagement. And then around the mental health professionals, majority of people said no, 60% of people said no here, that they didn't know that there were four staff members uh, for BPD that were mental health professionals. And that, that was 
the multiple choice. The free responses are a little bit more difficult to go through. I don't think it'd be the best use of our time to kind of walk through those as a team because you do have to go through each individual survey. But I'd encourage everyone to um, take a look at it and read what some people were saying. My, my personal take on it is that at least out of the people that DPD has been building relationships with, it seems to be going well, right? From that group's perspective, the telling ones were around, again, for me, the moss sticking out of generally a positive experience overall, but seeking and, and seem to be asking for more community building within that organization, right? Or within that community. So there might be something that we can put together around recommendations for growing the reach of community partners, right? And, and being proactive in, in other communities or proactive in bringing in other partners and that sort of stuff. Did anyone else have any thoughts on the results or feelings as they read through some of the free responses? I've just noticed that um, one thing might be to get more communication out there about what the police uh, are doing in the community uh, so that more people will participate, you know. Maybe they know about it, but haven't really. It's, I think that's what the response was. They, they might know about it, but haven't really done much, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there was a steep drop off, you're right, Janice, between people who knew and people who had participated. Yeah, so my, my thought would be to, um, you know, use whatever communication means are out there to get the word out so that maybe people will be a little more receptive. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. That's good. Connie, Monique, Mindy, any thoughts? Um, no, I think I think um, what Janice said is is important. The, the the challenge is is communication, and not just communication, but who are you touching? And so, if for the folks that are not associated with some of the organizations that we connected to via the police, then where does that leave us in terms of, of whole and few, full communication? It's just hard, you know, to try to capture and touch everybody, uh, especially when, quite frankly, we're just learning in this space, like what to do and how to go about it. So, you know, I, I think all things considered, um, we're still better off because we're at least engaging around the topic. Would it be helpful to you all? Um, I, I was thinking about responding back to Burke, who uh, operates the Survey Monkey account, to ask him for different um, a different way of sharing the open-ended data. So, you, like you know, for the questions that were open-ended, you could see all the responses rather than having to like go through all those individual responses. Is that something that would be helpful? I mean, I know I personally want to see that in that fashion, but given. Yes. Um, yeah. Okay. So I'll, yeah, I um, would. Mindy, oh, I think you can export to Excel. So it shows up as a row. Yeah, I thought about that too. I, I, I'm going to ask for both because I think Excel can sometimes also be visually hard for some folks. Um, okay. Kiana, do you have access to the SurveyMonkey account by any chance? So I'm supposed to. I don't know if I actually do, but I can check and get back to you. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Um, Mindy, since I, I did uh, come on late, um, did we establish, do we have, do we have a quorum for our meeting today? Yeah, 
we did um oh, okay. since davis yeah is okay. i i guess right. that's something i don't know if that's been shared um, no it had not been shared um widely and i can um because i i wasn't sure if i was gonna uh if we were if it was hard and fast but um that davis uh did tender his uh, resignation from the commission um was it the commission as a whole or the, yeah i'm pretty sure it was the commission as a whole i don't think it was just our subcommittee right i don't think he could do that um so it was uh, tendering his, his resignation and he just just you know family obligations and trying to you know really manage his time and so of course we uh gratefully uh, accepted his re resignation or maybe begrudgingly is probably the word accepted his resignation and, and uh and definitely left the door very wide open um, for him to come and engage if his schedule could permit the type of um, commitment that he felt was necessary to be productive on our team. And so uh, we were just uh, moving on with that bit of information and um, you know wishing him you know the best in his, his personal and professional life. So that was. Um, I'm sorry to hear that. <laughs> we were, and I, and I actually, it, it happened before even the last meeting, and it was like, I, I don't know if we're going to accept this. He's like, he's like, he's like, how do you just not accept the resignation? So we're, we're definitely are very appreciative of his um, you know, experience and find value in what he brought, and so we're just waiting every day to see if maybe he'll circle back, but. <laughs> that is the official stance at this moment. Um, so he he did that. offer up um, to to stay in communication with everyone, and you know if we want his feedback or his insights or you know any of that um, on the recommendations that we develop, what not his thoughts, um, he'd be happy to help us with that. I think it was just the time commitment of the meetings that was really conflicting with his personal life. Yeah. So if you want his number, I'll, I'll send it to you. You can hit him up. Um, Sharif, you're, you're, you have the agenda um, after we discussed our survey results, what, were, what we said. We were supposed to talk through recommendations. Okay, so before we do that, or I guess it's, it's furtherance of that, in furtherance of that, um, Mindy is going to just kind of give a spiel about the um, the tools that are available to us as we're making those recommendations uh, mm -hmm. and, and where to find that, right, Mindy? Yes. Um, right. Yeah, but I, I kind of want to, before I just jump into process and tools, I do want to check in with everyone and yeah, I just want to do a pulse check of whether y'all feel like you have, you know, the path to building out these recommendations or if you feel that there's more support that's needed from us before you. I mean, I can walk and I can walk through the process, um, but before I get to that part, feelings, how are y'all feeling? So for me personally, thinking about the area that Connie and I focused on, I quite frankly um, was not as um, dependent on the survey data. I do want to uh, acquire, and I've spoken with you before about this, Mindy, like kind of more academic uh, data around the issue of racial identification in you know, the Hispanic community, and um, and just making sure that the recommendations kind of cite some of those either best practices or you know um, movements or uh, the expert and, and the SME um, kind of things that are happening in that realm. And so it was it was it is something still that I don't think that I am fully equipped to provide the recommendation. And when you talk when you spoke to us about 
you know, the format and the guide for those recommendations. And, and, and I think Christian indicated that, you know, having some kind of sites or uh, support for some of these recommendations would help in, in getting the city council to to accept it or giving them the things to research that will help inform some of their decisions, um, albeit based on either survey data or, you know, again, current policies or movements and things like that, that that would be something helpful. I, I just really don't feel like I have a full grasp of that other than the data provided by Brookhaven and, you know, the disparities that we saw as a, um, as a team, and but not necessarily the, the support for the recommendation. So I don't know, you know, who has the bandwidth right now to do that research, but it, it almost, for me, feels like it, it has to be done in, because that is the recommendation. Um, it can't just, I, I know it, the recommendation itself could be to, to, to prepare, develop a way to better capture, you know, race and ethnicity data, but um, why is that necessary is, other than it feels right. Um, I, I'm not equipped to speak on it, maybe, you know, Connie is or Connie would know where the sources are because that does overlap with what she does. Yeah, I would add to Monique, I think your your own point. The the piece where I would go is there's not enough information around the individuals that make up the police department, quite frankly, when you think about fair treatment and, and racial disparities and and use of force. And I don't know that they capture it. So, you know, my gut says, Jesus, our recommendation would be to get a grant so they can dig deeper into where um um education i don't even want to call it training i feel like what would be beneficial whether there's a known problem or not would be some facilitated and ongoing engagement and discussion around um, not just the surface part of bias um, but the profiling and the things that happen especially consider considering the context of um you know the country, much less Brookhaven um, and Atlanta and Georgia. I think there's so much missing for us to go and make a recommendation. And I think that there are intentional missing pieces, no different than the marginalized or the non-dominant community tends to not have a voice because of all the obvious reasons, you know? And so, and then when, um, when we want to give voice to it, it's very difficult to capture it in a way that's productive and meaningful and impactful. So that's where I go. I struggle with a recommendation based on what we know. You know, the recommendation from where, what me and Monique worked on would be more um, to gather additional information. And again, I don't. I, I'd almost skip the additional information and say, where's the downside to? Um, you know, like I said, I what I make up is there's a grant, you know, there's a government grant that would um, allow for support um, around equitable treatment. Um, because we, we all know it, it's, it's next to impossible in the world that we live in that it's a it's a, a given that equitable treatment exists because it just doesn't. Who are we kidding? Um, whether there's whether there's um, data or not because we also know that we capture data based on what we want to know um, in terms of what's available data so you know i'm I, quite frankly i'm a little frustrated i'm a lot frustrated and um, a bit concerned with uh and quite frankly i feel a little guilty not that there was anything different that we could do i feel almost like um um Personally, I've let the commission down because I can't put my arms around where to go for a next step for recommendations due to um, a lack of information and a lack of time. But so, can the recommendation be to you know to continue full. and more accurately capture the data? You know yeah. that 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 is that is the recommendation. Um, it, it, I think especially for our our piece. Yeah. And that's really where I had to like make peace with it 
um, I think I was out here trying to prove, uh, prove mm-hmm. something, like prove my hypothesis. And, mm-hmm. you know, of course, we, you don't have enough data to prove your hypothesis at this point. Um, one of the things I did find interesting, so the night before the survey closed, I sat in the parking lot of my daughter's gymnastics class and I checked every single number on the list. I don't care if y'all reached out to them or not already, unless Janice had noted in the margin that she talked to someone, I checked every number. Now, I didn't know if they were all in line, didn't know if they were all, you know, cell phones or not. Just text them. This is Monique. I'm on the commission. You were, you know, sent out a survey. It closes there. If you haven't completed it, please complete it. Here's the link to it. That was my text, all 75 or however many there were. And unfortunately, when I got to um, the uh, the apartment complexes along Buford Highway, um, none of those numbers were cell numbers. And I mean, I, I imagine they're office numbers for the, the apartment complexes, so it's not, I don't think there was anything wrong with that. But those were also a lot of the numbers that are the email addresses that bounce back. And mm-hmm. then when I called the phone numbers, there were a lot of the phone numbers that were not connected. And so it was just like, huh, if this is, you know, the list that BPD uses to stay connected with these people, then their list is not accurate. I'd almost have to drive there, um, you know, to go and say, hey, I need a new person, another point of contact, and we update the list. And I don't know if they know that it's not accurate. They're just sending out emails. But I just thought, you know, unfortunately, we didn't get that that little piece or that big piece or that important piece um and and it was it was definitely very telling i had some folks that engaged with me by text all night long you know just oh yeah here's the survey i thought this was interesting oh do you know that this question had this problem in it and whatever but it was it definitely was was telling so i did want to share that with um with everyone uh, regarding that effort to collect the data and we start, we sort of touched that early on, I guess, um, you know, when we look at applying our, um, the dominant culture way of addressing the general population that may or may not uh, move in the same ways, that's challenging because maybe a lot of those phone numbers were disconnected. You know, it's almost like if you think about the school system and the letters go out even to the Hispanic community in English and the majority of parents don't speak English, but yet they say, we sent it out. And so that those are the kinds of things that, that um, I would say, you know, foundationally might need to be addressed by Brookhaven police when you think about the diversity of our community. If the intent is engagement, you know, and we've got very limited even knowledge of where they can engage or where they can, you know, support a survey, you know, where does that leave us? So, so I say all that to say without beating a dead horse, Monique, I think we're aligned that, you know, there's got to be additional um, opportunities to learn uh, about the community and how the community feels about engaging with the police, including use of force and not just limited to that. So kind of, was that grant opportunity that you referenced, were you just saying in general, we sh- they should try to get a grant or is there actually a program that exists? To I just that? made it up. I bet you there's probably a program that exists, but think about it. it usually with programs, I mean, I think about it and I'm not, I'm not, I'm not on a, 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 a um, soapbox, although I kind of am. If you think about the lottery and the the monies, you know, think about who's benefiting from the lottery. It's not the 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 um, the subtle communication around education through the lottery is for marginalized communities, and that's not who's getting lottery money at all. You know, so so I don't know. I, my assumption would be maybe there is grant money that would address it, but you know, the marginalized community doesn't know how to touch the grant money because they don't even know grants exist. So there's a there's sort of a, a, a huge gap between accessibility, um, even to opportunities um, to touch this stuff because the dominant population is really affected more times than not by what we're trying to um, touch around race equity and around, um, you know, within Brookhaven. And we got to 
we got to own that. We just got to own it in order to, you know, make a move and, um, and improve our, our community. And somebody's got to call it and, and call it out of curiosity. Cause that's where I am. It's not, it's not blame. It's, it's, Hey, how do we, you know, it can't be okay that we walk away and say, Oh, just didn't touch the Hispanic community because they didn't answer the survey. Oh, you know, black folks are getting pulled over and killed by the police still and no data showed that we need to do anything different. So, you know, that's the part where in my heart it aches. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, Janice, Sharuk, any any other thoughts, feelings you want to share before I jump into this? I, I also have something to offer, but I don't want to take up uh, to Monique and Connie specifically, um, but I don't want to take up more time from this meeting, so I might do it over email, um, but I hear y'all. Feel free to call me anytime, Mindy, on my sale, <laughs> anytime. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, what Davis and I were looking at was really from a partnerships perspective. So I think we called it out early that there weren't, there was clear gaps in the partner list, right? And even the first iteration of it had incorrect emails and phone numbers and stuff that later got updated and, and all that. So I think all, all of that was, was to me pretty visible early on in the process. Um, and so you know, just from a from a partnerships recommendation perspective, I think it's about improving the the ongoing engagement to understand whether those partnerships are real or not, right? And then creating some focus on not having obvious misses on on the sheet, right? That we can pretty easily just the six people who show up to the calls can look at the sheet and pretty quickly say, oh, why aren't these three three people in here? You know, Shark, I would love to to uh, be able to assume that the police wants to engage with that population. And I think without assessing that, that we're, 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 um, I think we're in pretend land unless we can even foundationally support, because it's one thing to be voluntold that you're going to engage the community. But if your mindset says um, they're less than, or if your mindset says you really don't give a shit, then are we really doing anything other than putting a Band-Aid on something where it's going to bleed through? And I don't know that to be the case, but I, I feel like that's a missing piece is what is our starting point with the Brookhaven police in terms of how they feel about race equity? In terms of, I feel like we're trying to fix something and we don't know what we're fixing. Um, if, that, if that makes sense, there's a, there's a step sort of, um, um, below that. And, you know, I, I think about, a, um, oh, I've got a, I, you know, in our work, we do this um, intercultural development um, inventory that sort of gauges your capacity to be able to engage in cultures in your, within your own culture, but in cultures other than your own. And there it goes from polarization, which is monocultural mindset, all the way to multicultural mindset or um, adaptation, the capacity to adapt, depending on who's in front of you, of course, that's, that's like, you know, master's PhD versus polarization is you hadn't even got to preschool yet around cultural awareness. And so being able to just have a benchmark or a starting point, so that we know where the um, exposure or education or um, experience needs to come from, I think is is a component that potentially could be helpful. Um, because if they're not exposing themselves or they're not having a part of the experience, that, that applies to all of us, then how do you learn? How do you grow? Because we come from the seat we sit in. And if we come from the seat we sit in and all of us have unconscious bias and we think we're doing great, I think I'm doing great, Sharuk with um, you know, um, engaging with you when in fact you think I'm a racist. So what gives and, and how do we, how do we um, normalize first where folks are and then 
get them to move the ball. In my head, in my heart, that's ultimately what we've got to do in order to stop excessive force on the police force in Brookhaven in order to, you know, not have my nephew who comes to visit with a hoodie on walking up to Starbucks when I live in Brookhaven say, why are you in this neighborhood? Yeah, I mean, hmm. How real are we trying to get in the next 19 minutes of this meeting? Yeah. But, you know, I, at, at some level, Connie, I've, I've been relatively frustrated at the direction of this committee for a couple months now. Right. I think it, that we've done a really bad job of engaging with the police force, generally speaking, to hear their perspective and to help and include them as part of the journey so that we can start to get people across the hump. Right. Yeah. And the only way to get people across the hump is to engage. It doesn't matter if they don't like what we're going to say. It doesn't matter if they're going to be standoffish. Yeah. Right. If you don't engage, then it doesn't matter. Everything you're doing is going to be, for the most part, performative. Right. So, I mean, I, well, we why, have the, are we, why are we accepting that our time is up? Excuse my expression, but fuck that. Why does our time have to be up? Because we haven't done what we wanted and needed to do. Then why not say, hey, Leslie, I'm so glad you're on here. Um, you know, Mindy, I'm so glad you're on here. Why not say we want another three months? All I can say is no. Why are we going with the flow when, Sharuk, I think we're in a very similar place, you know, of frustration. And so you know, maybe we're shifting. We kind of been following the rules of engagement, quite frankly, again, nothing wrong with that, learning as we go, trying to do it. And yet we don't feel like that has been enough. Yeah, I mean, Connie, Trent, to be completely frank, I, I hear you, I agree with you. I think the work is important, but if we, we all got a lot of stuff going on in our lives, yeah. right? And I have other things going on in my life that meaningfully impact communities in yeah. the metro Atlanta area, right? So unless we decide and the commission decides it's going to change the way it's going to do business to be a little bit more real and a little bit more serious, I just don't see the value of investing my time. I love that you said that. I hear you. Hats off to you because I get it and I'm with you. And, I, and I, I, I apologize. I think everyone's been doing what they can, right? I really appreciate Mindy and Leslie, right? Coming in, you guys are working right now and it's like 6.15, I work late a lot. I know it's not great. So thank you for the sacrifice and not like trying to talk shit about people on the call or anything like that. I just, I don't, I don't think anything really real is gonna come out of the work that we've done, right? I have a lot of thoughts on uh, what we could have done differently. Yeah. I'm with you. No debate here, just discussion. I hear you and I'm with you. Sorry, Mindy. I'm I'm sorry, y'all. I had to run my kid into gymnastics. Did y'all say my name? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think you said sorry, Mindy. Oh, okay. All right. Just yeah. making sure. I was like, all right, I'm back. <laughs> okay, so now what? Um Leslie, Mindy, based on, you know, I mean, maybe, maybe Janice and Monique weigh in. Monique, I don't know if you just heard what me and Sharuk said that was somewhat similar in levels of frustration. And, you know, I, it's almost like I feel like we went, we started off good and we went through this phase of just going through the motions. And, you know, and I'm outing myself as well, like trying to, trying to hold on to stay committed. Um, because, you know, it's all, it, it does feel like it's all for naught. And yet, um, you know, I don't, I'm, I'm just, I, it's frustrating to check the box. And, and it's also frustrating to be, um, you know, um, vocal about, you um, I'm just, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm out of the business of being grateful that we just went through the motions. I'd love to just share a perspective from the other, that I see across the entire commis commission and from the other subcommittees. But I, I am wondering, Janice, you haven't gotten a word in this meeting. Just any thoughts on your mind? I'd like, love to hear from everybody here before I, I share. You're muted, Janice. There, yeah. Well, 
I'm probably more ignorant than uh -huh. <laughs> Connie and um, Sheru. So, um, I don't know. Um, I think Connie's going a lot deeper than I was thinking, and that's good. It's good that she is. Um, and I think we, we still do need to probe more, to learn more. Um, like, have we really touched um, the, the Blacks in our community or even the Hispanics? I, I don't know. Um, and I sent a survey out to um, an Asian Indonesian leader in our church and he did respond and that was good but that's one you know and there's so many more um, so I don't know and the, um, the recommendation template Mindy I have no idea how to go with that <laughs> I'm sorry um, um, you know, I thought when you're making a recommendation, it's just you make a recommendation, but I see you have to do like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight steps. And I, <laughs> I have no idea how to fill in all these eight steps, um, but you're going to tell us, right? So if we get that far. Um, so, so I, I don't know. I, I think maybe the survey just kind of scratched the surface. Um, I think that's what Connie and Shruk are saying. So um, I don't know where we need to go, really. Thank you, Janice. I didn't mean to put you on the spot, but I but, think you no, but you you've shared what where where you, where you are, and and I think that's so um, important. Um, I, I, if I could just share some overarching. Uh, kind of feedback and some of what's emerging across the subcommittees and conversations that are being had. Um, so a couple of things. So in terms of touching um, the Hispanic community, it's been, we've had trouble with that with this entire process. And um, so it's not just this subcommittee and it's been due to a lot of things. Um, you know, I would say the, the top three things that it seems to be due to is one, just ready, easy, accessible Spanish translation, right? Two is we just really didn't get at the pop-ups, no matter where they were and, um, and other events, we did not um, have a lot of Hispanic participation or, or you know, folks, um, coming and wanting to know more information. And third, um, which is interesting, even when we did and when we had, um, you know, AXA and others supporting us, for many of the Hispanics in Brookhaven, when we began talking about concepts of social justice, depending on the countries of their or origin, concepts of social justice, you know, and equity, I mean, Actually, we just spent time over and over trying to communicate what that means. They were tough concepts for someone who's coming, maybe even from an oppressive regime or government or someone who's just trying to kind of get in and get their documentation and go to work. And so we found that, you know, on the on the street context were much more difficult, took two and three times as long to just say, hey, here we are and we'd love to get your input because it was really um tough to make that communication. So those are not any excuses. You know, we did have conversation at LAA. Those are not excuses, but the outreach was made. So every committee, and there's gonna be an overarching section in the report that speaks to the need to go deeper and further to reach the Hispanic population. That is absolutely true. And that's gonna be the job of you all, you all, the people who secede you and the city to do that. So that's that's common. Another one is this belief that even after a year and exhausted as we are making it to the, um, you know, to that final step, that still we feel in some ways there was not enough time to get to all that we needed to get to. And that makes sense. We're a volunteer group kind of trying to wrest data and information from the city, process it, wrest it from the general public, and then come up with, with um, you know, frame our thinking and come up with recommendations um, 
around it. And so I would say that what the commission is doing is absolutely directional across all the subcommittees. It is not, and I know what I suggest should be, you know, a step-by-step, -step, uh, you know, process for the for the city to follow, to hand to Christian and say, implement this. These are not implementable. These are directional. These are coaching, right? From what we saw and from what we understand the needs to be, um, you know. The city has its own work to do around equity, right? Its own work to do around determining what equity means in each of its departments, determining who is responsible, what they're in hiring, what their goals and objectives are, in policing what they are. So, so another overarching that's coming out of um, the committees is the city, it's time for the city to do its work. Like right now, you all probably have a better sense of what's going on, certainly in those departments, than 90% of the staff who work in those departments, right? So there's work to do, and that's another overarching. So I don't want you to feel like, oh, we, we didn't meet it. They ain't ready to get it, it much deeper than directional. Um, so it seems to me that, you know, what, from what I've been hearing, there are a couple of, of clear um, coaching and guiding recommendations from this group that make a lot of sense. One of them is really about um, figuring out what's a partnership and making police department partnerships real, setting expectations. Connie, you use the word normalizing what's expected in those relationships on both sides, right? And making them real. Um, how do you add the depth in the, to those such that you really have a two-way communication going on? They list a whole bunch of them and we saw that the data ain't great, the people aren't responding and so forth. So there's a lot to be said about what it means to form a partnership about shared expectations and agreements. Um, another is around the data, and this is coming up particularly in procurement, and it makes sense, and hiring, is around get better and more sophisticated and, and, and tracking the data. You can't figure out if things are equitable. Look at that gorgeous little dog. <laughs> You can't figure out if things are equitable or inequitable unless you've got the numbers and the data in front of you. So a data agenda, a data development agenda that clearly looks across the functions and who is um, who is benefiting and what the instances are. I remember early in when you all were having were working through, you know, the self. I think I have it right. You'll know, but you know the. Um, the Latino, if you get to self-identify, I think, on some of the forms and on others, like that's a clear one. That could be a recommendation on itself, like get your forms together, right? Even if you have to ask two more questions, make sure that you're all asking and getting the same information from anyone you stop. But the data and kind of data development piece. Um, there's another piece too that it seems to me that I've heard, and again, I just float around to the different ones and haven't visited with you all in a minute. And that's around, you remember we were gonna have these civic um, uh, inclusive dinners and then we heard some folks were upset and, and, and the major said the cops weren't feeling it. It feels to me like we've got to understand and dig into some of these police um, people's attitudes, right? Um, the police officers understand, so just like the city has its work to do around equity. There are conversations to be had and training to be had with, with the police. Now they may not all come around and think this, you know, equity matters or so forth, but that whole incident indicated that there's work to be done within that group, right? How do you begin working with them, talking? What are the best training, you know, programs in the world? What are the best, you know, um, you know, orientations around race and equity and different and, and continuum of force and have that that piece. Um, and then I think, and again, this will be another overarching one, so they may roll into one, but it's the role of a group like the commission, may not be you, you may say, look, I want to take a break for a while, but someone who holds the city accountable, right? To see what they're doing, to see if they're moving in the directions, to see if, if data is coming out more clean and to understand that. So there's this piece about kind of accountability and it doesn't have to be a citizens review board because it's not about incidents, but it's about who holds Brookhaven you know, accountable for how um, this work moves forward. Um, so, so I think you have your recommendations. I think you're talking about them. I feel the frustration that you 
won't be able to point necessarily to everyone from this data point to that data point, but it doesn't mean everything that you have seen, intuited, discussed in these months directly with police officers, with the, you know, the uh, police officials and all, isn't intelligent points. You're still the most informed people in this whole city around what the heck is happening in, um, in Brookhaven with their police. So, so I'm, I'm wanting you to own that. And finally, I just say before I shut up and, and take a full stop is that for the recommendations, Connie, I mean, um, Janice, you're the ones who said eight steps and it, it looks like a lot, but I think it looks easier when you just look at the sample recommendation. It's just saying, here's what we heard and learned, right? Here's why we think this. Right, and here's how we want to move forward. That's one page. Yours may be three quarters of a page, but it's really just here's what we're saying, and here's why because of these conversations, this understanding, etc. Um, and so let's move forward. So I don't, I don't want that to to be a stress point for you in terms of um, of having to follow that or it being a lot. It, it's the conversations that you've been having every couple of weeks for the last you know seven months. Leslie, uh, I hear I hear what you said, and I appreciate the uh, positive reinforcement that you put in there, right? But I think at some level, uh, if the city is serious about this, like you said, then then they need to put their money where their mouth is, right? Because this is this is not work that's going to be done by a volunteer organization, right? And they need to have an equity officer, right? Or something like that, that is constantly working with the community who is looking at these problems, who is pushing recommendations that they know are realistic, right? Many times we've talked about things where, where to me, it was clear up front that that was not going to change from BPD, but we're still talking about it and we're still digging into it. And I'm trying to figure out why we're even talking about it when BPD made it clear that we, you know, we can talk about it all we want. They're not going to listen. Right. And that's fine. That's that's their prerogative, right? To do that. But but the change is really going to have to come from within. And and I think that whoever the next set of group is or whatever it looks like, that that more time needs to be spent engaging directly with city employees responsible for those areas. Right. Because I don't I don't think you're changing hearts and minds. And I think it's a miss on us as a committee that it took us until four weeks ago to realize that we can't have a conversation with police officers, right? And then we were just like, oh, that's cool. Okay, we won't. That was also a miss, right? I don't know that we could have learned it sooner than that though, sure, I, I, you know, it's disappointing. I don't know that I would I would call it a, a, um, a shit, I guess it is a miss, but. <laughs> totally, I mean, but Connie, how hard side, could it have been for us to sit here and say, you know, maybe we should engage with the other half of the stakeholders. We spent half our yeah. time talking about how do we engage with the Hispanic community without coming up with good answers, which is a good yeah. thing to talk about. Don't get me wrong. It's a very important part of our community, but we never talked about engaging with the other side. Yeah. But right? I mean, because we, we, we had a liaison and- there, Monique, like, we can barely hear you. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, can you hear me better now? No? It's very okay, quiet. Else can. Oh, oh can, can you hear me? Can everyone hear me? Uh, it's quiet, work. but we can, yeah. Huh. I wonder why. Um, what, what I was saying is we, we had a liaison and there was nothing that she, she said before then that gave us an indication that we didn't have a, a clear line or that, you know, her perspective was not you know, shared by those stakeholders. And I don't know, um, I, I don't know. I, I guess I, I, I think that the, we've always kind of known that law enforcement in general was going to be, you know, resistant to any, I don't know, like change or pressure or, you know, accusation that I, I think that it was very, it was very clear in the beginning by, you know, all the data we were receiving that, hey, they, you know, put their best foot forward, but thought that they were really doing it right. Um, and so would therefore be somehow, you know, we're better than, you know, most departments. We do, do more education than most people. And so I, I, I always had the, the expectation or, you know, the suspicion 
that it was not going to be a, oh yeah, and we can do better because that didn't, it didn't resonate. Um, and I, and I felt unfortunately because we don't have the data that shows exactly where they can do better, that a lot of it will be lost because it's like, we're doing, you know, awesome work and we're, we're exceeding every minimum that's out there. And so no matter what recommendations you have, we don't have those types of problems and you don't have the data that shows that we have those types of problems. So why are we doing this? Yeah. I mean, I, I hear you, Monique. I, I, we're, we're at time, so I'll just respectfully disagree. Right. I mean, the, my attitude at work, whenever we, we find out something like this, where you were missing someone's perspective is make excuses for them and figure out what you could have done better to have gotten that engagement earlier. Right. So that's my perspective on this because we never asked the question. Many times Major Harrell asked if we wanted her to join. We said no. She sent over a list of recommendations. We didn't do anything with it. Right. And these sorts of things. So, I mean, I, I know there was lots of opportunity and I was there. I could see that the guard was up. Right. It was clear as day that the guard was up in the conversations. And that was our opportunity to do something about it. Right. So, can but, I ask a question? Go. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Sure. No, I was going to say we're, 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 we are two minutes over and it is my son's bedtime. So I do have to go because that's my responsibility. I just have one quick question, even if we just think about it rhetorically. So the question is now what, based on what we know, um, how do we maximize where we are going forward and what can we do now? And whether that goes in the chat and we digest it and think about it, you know, or, or not. I, 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 Leslie, I hear you. And I think that you know, you make a good point to say we do have recommendations, um, we, even though we might be disappointed with what they are, um, because we want it to move the ball and clearly the ball's not going to move. So the question is, as a as a group, what's our next real step? And, you know, as we um, close this thing out, you know, that's impactful. What's the most impact from this point forward that we could do as a committee? Well, I'll jump in and say, so next week, you know, um, we're going to need, this subcommittee will want to share um, where, we, where you're moving with the recommendations and at, at a high level, but for the entire group's discussion. And I think that the degree to which we can spend our time talking about what needs to happen going forward, we will be, um, you know, we'll be better positioned, right? I think that there is nothing wrong with saying we only scrub the scratch the surface, you know, here's areas where we, you know, could have gone or we felt resistance or we, where we recommend work happen um, in the future. But we will want to want to put forth um, our thinking about what it is that we can do because of our experiences you know, that we've had in this, um, in this period of time. I, I, you know, I, and I hear you, Sharuf, and I, I'm, I'm, I feel your frustration, but I gotta tell you, you all did about as much as a volunteer group could do. No, maybe not every step, could have pivoted here, could have done that, fine. But given where we are and who we are, and given even the times we're in with this whole, with the whole virtual and, and COVID, you guys did do that. Um, I, I, it's not just about being positive reinforcement. It really is about product, and I think it, it is there. I would love it if maybe if 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 we could just find some time. Maybe Mindy and I could put our heads together and with um you know with, with Monique and just suggest and Shalouf and just suggest um some areas. What you're saying, Connie, like how we might move forward with some recommendations that honor what you're feeling and expressing today and respect that and also, um, you know, fulfill your, your piece and commit to the rest of the commission for what you have experienced and your, and your recommendations for moving forward. So, I mean, we can certainly help to, to pull that together. You, are, you guys were never as easy as procurement and contracting, you know, there's, there's no question about that. Um, so if we can help, we would love to, we offer to. I'm offering you, Mandy, Hey, Sharuk, I know it's your kid's bedtime, but I'm going to tell you something. 
I like where you're going. I like your bad attitude. Keep that badass attitude. <laughs> you brought the noise today, man. I hadn't seen that. I like it. <laughs> I mean, he was tough. He's like, and work is how I would do it. I know. You the noise, man. I, I asked you, Connie, how real you want it to get. I, I want it real. I like it. <laughs> That's how we're going to get stuff done. You bring that back next time. <laughs> I've been holding back on you. <laughs> clearly, clearly. <laughs> sure. I was just wondering one thing. You were saying we didn't take the major's recommendations, and there was something else you mentioned we didn't do. Could we kind of backtrack a little bit and try to maybe recoup some of that that you thought maybe we should have done? You know? Yeah, I, I think so. I mean, I think, you know, we can take sit with major harrell talk about our recommendations look at her recommendations try to incorporate some of those things right she had things like increasing the amount of crisis intervention training to be yearly for police officers and stuff in there i mean those are those are real things right that that could could help and stuff like that so i i mean i think we can involve Major Harrell in the conversation and involve other police officers in the conversation as well. I would really like to get feedback from other police officers. I yeah. didn't. Uh, we know, had talked I, about doing that. I know they um, they had the uh, what was it? They went to different churches on the weekend, and one came to our church. So I, I introduced myself to him and talked to him a little bit, and I enjoyed that. You know, uh, but I'd like to. I wish I do wish that we'd have the opportunity to meet them in person and feel them out a little bit more, you know. Does anybody know offhand how many Brookhaven? I know I can go back and look at the data because I know we have it. How many Brookhaven police officers do we have? Guesstimate. I couldn't even guess. Um, I don't know, but I I did want I think to. I think you're talking, but I can't hear you. I don't know why I'm not heard today. Can can you maybe if I I don't know if something is happening. Is that better or worse? Better it's the same. Worse? It's the same. Oh, now we can see you. Better? No. We can now read your lips. So just stay right there. <laughs> <laughs> we could. Huh. Anyway, um, I don't know what is happening. Never mind. I'll put it in the chat. I just wanted to point out that there was, um, let's see, can you hear me now? Hello? You can? We, we can make it work, Monique. Okay. All I, I was just going to say that I, I, I don't, I think it was a kind of a lack of communication on Sherbrooke sure and I's part about uh, Major Harold's recommendations, because I don't think that there's any intent to, to not use those. In fact, there was a, a lot of intent and conversation with Mindy and I about um, um, actually how they do really. You're on mute. Mindy just went on mute. Um, better? Yeah. yeah. Can you hear me? Okay. Um, that there was that there was a lot of conversation between Mindy and I about how they really do align with what we want to do going forward. And that we will, um, that we were going to kind of share those with the committee, so that each person with a 4P could figure out if that kind of properly captured what we wanted to do. So I don't think I, I don't want it to us to be to leave here saying that they gave recommendations and we're not going to do anything with them or we didn't do anything with them. So just wanted to add that. Yeah. Thank you. So, Shark, I know you're trying to get out of here um, so you can put your baby to sleep. Uh, so I just want to acknowledge that I heard you and I heard Connie and your frustrations. Um, and I, I have a lot of curiosities as well that I, you know, because of time I won't get into today. Um, but I will just name that one of them is really your availability to dig into some of these things and be creative about how we use the next few weeks. Um, and that's just under the assumption that we can't build in more time. I'm not in a position to say anything about timing um, and like 
you know, that stuff. So I won't, um, but yeah, I will be in touch, Leslie and I, and um, I'm open to thinking creatively about how we can, like Leslie said, honor your frustrations and your feelings and your experiences um, in this process. So, yep, that's all I'll say for now. Yeah, maybe like yeah. Connie said, you can call me, you have my information, right? Mm -hmm. I can, uh, I particularly like morning meetings, you know that. Yeah, um, okay. <laughs> No, we just um, need to start kicking Monique out of the meetings because she's running our morning schedules. No, I'm just kidding. Um, okay, and I guess that means we will have to go over process stuff at our meeting next week. Yep. Um, we will, before our meeting next week, I will share, um, I guess, a draft. Um, just the topic of the recommendations for everybody to kind of build out and start thinking about how those will be, be built out. So hopefully we'll come to that meeting kind of ready to, to do some work on, on that. So just be on the lookout for something in the next day or so. Thank you. Thank you all for, for taking this so much to heart. It, it's it's seen and appreciated for sure. And I hope the, the Brookhaven folks appreciate it. And I, I seriously hope I offended nobody. And if I did, you know, and, and, and you'd like to then continue tough. the conversation, just, no. just reach out. I mean, you know, uh, I never, I never, I can come off one way, but I'm a pretty nice guy. And I really- You're, you're a sweetheart and you spoke your heart and we appreciate it. I'm sure. with Connie. I'm going to be disappointed if I don't see this side of you next time because we got to make <laughs> stuff happen, man. <laughs> Thanks, Connie. <clears throat> All right. I'll have a wonderful evening. Thank you. You too. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you, everyone, Bye. for showing up. Really appreciate it. Thank see y'all next week.